cool. Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything. I'm Devin, and it's been a while since I've done a nice thorough Fusion 360 design video. So that's what we're gonna do today. What I have here is a Trezor One hardware wallet. It's basically a cryptocurrency wallet that lets you store and spend Bitcoin more easily. Don't worry, I don't wanna get you bogged down in the details. Today's video is more just about looking at how I design versus the specific end result. But basically, this wallet has a little screen and a couple buttons, and you plug it into your computer as you're accessing your Bitcoin wallet, and it gives you random pins, it gives you little confirmations of your Bitcoin addresses so that you know that you're not getting hacked and stuff like that. Basically, I just wanna be able to access the screen and buttons easily at my desk. And the way it works right now is this just plugs into my USB hub and it's kind of dangling around. It often ends up face down. It's just not the most comfortable to work with. So what I want is a little stand that lets me hold it up in front of my screen, gives me easy access to the screen and the buttons with one hand and yeah, just a nice little organized stand for this little screen right here. That's what we're gonna be making. This will be more of a intermediate Fusion 360 tutorial. I won't go through every single command, but I still think it could be helpful for just about anyone who's designing at any level in Fusion 360. So let's get right to it. So as I mentioned, I really just want a simple way to hold up this little Trezor wallet. So I quickly drew up this simple stand. It holds the wallet at a slight angle so it's easy to view, easy to access. I want the cable to come out neatly in the back and stick right into the USB hub like that. Nothing crazy, just clean and functional. One thing that's nice about this little Trezor wallet is that it's got a pretty simple design. We've got the front face here that has the screen and the buttons, and that's not the simplest design, but from there it's basically just a straight extrusion backwards. And because of that, I can take a nice little shortcut and just use my flatbed scanner to bring in a scale image of my wallet. With that scanned in, I now have a scale reference of the actual Trezor wallet, and it's very easy for me to just trace out the screen, the buttons, and the outlines that are pertinent to my design. I'm doing this in Adobe Illustrator because it's what I'm comfortable with, but you can also use another vector tracing program like Inkscape, or even bring in the image as a canvas to Fusion and just trace it there using their spline tools and whatnot. Anyways, there's my line art. I'll just select it and export it as a DXF file, and that'll let me bring it into Fusion. I will still need to measure the depth of the different parts, but that's like three measurements versus dozens. So scanning it in really does save me a lot of work in terms of the reconstruction. All right, let's get into Fusion now. I'll turn on my origin, and on this top face, we're gonna use the insert DXF command and bring in that drawing we made in Illustrator. There it is. We'll get that relatively into position, but to make sure we're accurate, we'll just hit OK, go down to the timeline, edit the sketch, and then we can select everything and use the move command with the point to point function so that we've got the center point lined up with the origin, just like that. Now we're ready to go into 3D, so I'll just do an extrude command on the main body here first, and that is 7.15 millimeters deep, I do want to get the USB plug in there as well, so I'll go back into sketches and turn that on again, and then I'll do a new extrude just for that USB part, since the measurement is slightly different. This one is 6.4 millimeters thick, and it's also offset from the back plane by just about half a millimeter. Okay, we'll accept that, and then finally, just for the sake of being thorough, we'll also model in this little plug part that's exposed, since there's a little gap there. I'll do a quick extrude cut of the buttons and the screen, just so that we have that constant reference visually. And there we go. Now we can start building our actual case that we're gonna 3D print. Let's start a new sketch on the top face here. And first I'll draw this rectangle around the screen and the buttons, which will indicate the hole in our case. So we'll make sure that's centered with that center constraint. And we'll just add some dimensions in here. They don't have to be exact or anything, I just want to make sure there's enough space around all the elements so that we can uh, press the buttons and all that. That looks good. Now I'll hit the shortcut P so that we can project this face right here. And that allows us to select the outline here 
and use the offset tool by hitting O. And we'll create a little clearance here, just 0.2 millimeters, so that we can stick the trezor into our case. So that'll be the clearance, and then we'll do another offset of the same outline so that we get the thickness of the case. So we'll just make this 2.2 millimeters, and I think that'll work out. So now we've drawn our kind of shell outlining the trezor, but our case is gonna encompass the plug as well and part of the cable. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend these lines straight down to start creating the overall shape of the stand. The cable is gonna come out of the bottom there and it's gonna curve in a sharp 90 degree angle. So we need to give it space to do that. I'm kind of just guessing here, but I think 107 millimeters total will be enough space to fit everything. While we're in this sketch, I'm gonna do another project to outline the USB plug here because we're gonna want that to fit into the case as well. And I was getting an error trying to do a 0.2 millimeter offset here. And that's just something that'll happen, especially when you import DXF files like I did. So let's see if there's a way to work around this. Well, the offset is working for smaller values and I was able to get it as large as 0.145 millimeters offset, which in this case should be enough for a snug fit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with that. Otherwise I might've had to redraw the USB plug. I probably didn't need to put those little indents and could have simplified it a bit more. But in any case, I managed to do my offsets and give that USB plug that two millimeter offset as well. And then we'll also create a little offset for this gap. Okay, let's try that out. So let's go into the extrude command and first I'm gonna do the front face. So I'm just gonna select all of these profiles and extrude everything down 1.2 millimeters. And to give it some clearance, we'll also have a 0.2 millimeter offset. Then I'll turn on that sketch again, just so that we can do an extrude cut of this window. Let's also give these edges a little bit of a fillet to kind of match the design of the trezor. I'll just have my original sketch turned on and just try to match these fillets to the rounding of the buttons just by eye. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so we've got our front face. Now we just need to extrude backwards and create all of the parts that hold on to the trezor. So once again, we'll reference that sketch that we did with all the offsets. And now I'm gonna select everything that surrounds the case in the USB plug. Although it looks like here we're having some problems with this profile. Once again, it's because of that USB plug offset that was having some weird things going on. Hmm. So let's go back into that sketch and see if we can diagnose it. It seems like there's some kind of a gap or glitch that's not making this profile selectable. And by drawing these lines through, I can kind of fine tune it and see that there is some weird stuff going on right there. So in the end, my scanning trick kind of backfired. We'll just go ahead and delete some of these lines and redraw them in Fusion 360. And I'll actually delete this offset as well because we're not really gonna need that. Now let's extrude all the profiles that surround our case and plug. Let's have this extrude from object and select that face. And let's extrude that 7.3 millimeters so that the entire Trezor wallet will fit right into that hole nice and flush. All right, so this is a good start in terms of the upright part of our stand. Now we kind of wanna figure out the angle at which this is gonna be standing up. So I'll kind of just play around with the view here and figure out exactly what I want it to look like. It's kind of gonna be tilted back like that. So we'll select this side face now and we can go ahead and draw the bottom of the stand from there. So I'm just gonna draw some lines like that and kind of just draw out the bottom part of the stand. Let's hit D to use the dimension tool here and measure this just so that we have everything matching. So that's 8.5 millimeters. We'll make this 8.5 millimeters as well. And we'll do the same for this little chamfered section, 8.5. Although let's actually just bring this right to a point here. I'm kind of improvising here if you haven't noticed. <laughs> let's use extrude again and just make that match the width of the rest of the stand. So there we go, that's basically what I want my base to be. Let's go ahead and bring back that chamfer right here 
just so that we don't have such a pointy part. Once again, I'm kind of just eyeballing here. This is a bit of a freeform design. And I'm not sure what's going on right there, but let's just select all of this and extrude again to make sure that it's one continuous surface. All right. Okay, now how about we draw the channel for the USB cord? I'm gonna draw a sketch on the left plane here and we can do a section analysis to get a better view. And now I'll use the project command to bring some of these faces into our current sketch. And we can reference that to create the profile of our channel here. I'll put some dimensions in here. I wanna fill at this point so that we have a nice curve here and the cable is gonna follow that curve. So we wanna make sure that it's gentle enough that we don't end up kinking our USB cable. And uh, I'll go ahead and close off this profile. Then we'll do an extrude command, make it symmetric and have that distance match the width of our USB cable, which is just under 3.5 millimeters. So we'll do that cut and if we close out of our section analysis, you can see that we have the start of a channel here. I'm gonna sketch the rest of the channel on this top face here so that we can have it curve off to the side. And I'll do a section analysis there again, just so that it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing. Project that first part of the channel. And from there, I'll just continue and draw this curve that goes off to the side like so. And we'll offset that 3.5 millimeters again so it lines up with the rest of our cutout. All right, we've got our profiles. Let's go ahead and cut it and have it match the depth of the rest of the channel. So basically those two extrudes combined form this channel that goes down and to the side. We can round this bottom with a fillet just to match the contour of our cable. And there we go. We have this channel that runs all the way down and out to the right. And that looks pretty good. We'll put a small fillet here just so that we reduce some of the strain on that corner. And then we can do some fillets on the back here just to make it look nice. Four millimeters seems to look right. I'll start putting some chamfers around the edges just so that we soften some of those corners. And we're gonna skip through a bunch of my work here because I ended up crashing Fusion 360 and basically ending up right here again. So I decided to make this fillet a little bit smaller. There we go. Now I do want this to be a two-part case so that we have the treasure completely held inside of this stand. So I'm making a second part that's gonna close up the back surface. To do that, I created this offset extrusion and we'll do an extrude in two directions to match the width of the front part of the case. Also, let's actually save our file to learn from our mistakes. <laughs> now to match the front of the case, I'm just gonna use the project command again to bring those curves in and then extrude away the excess. For the back here, it's just a simple fillet, so I'll do that four millimeter fillet again, and then I'll do a chamfer on these back edges to match the ones I did on the front, one millimeter. All right, that looks really nice and clean. Everything's enclosed. Now I just need a way to snap these two parts together so that the case stays enclosed. There's a lot of ways to do this, I could just glue it together, but come on, I'm not a monster. Let's create a little snapping mechanism. After brainstorming a few different ways to hold these two parts together, I decided to try something kind of new and create this snap mechanism using pins that come out of this surface right here. Just follow along and hopefully you'll figure out what I'm trying to do along the way. <laughs> so we'll create one rectangular pin here and mirror that to the other side. Then I'll create another sketch on this left plane. And instead of an extrude, we're gonna do a sweep here because I want those pins to come out at an angle that matches the angle of the base here. So I'll create this line and have it go up to the outside of the case here and be parallel to the bottom line here. And then I'll use a sweep command on these two profiles and use that little line as the path so that we have this kind of diagonal extrusion. Now we're gonna need matching holes on this back case. So I'm actually gonna go back into that sketch and create an offset of both of these rectangles because we need to create a little bit of clearance. So I'll just do a 0.2 millimeter offset of both of these. 
and then go and turn on both of my sketches again. And I'll do another sweep, but this time with those slightly larger profiles with that offset we just put in. And we're gonna want this to cut only the back part of the case. So there we go. Now we have the rectangular pins on the front part of the case and the corresponding holes on the back part of the case. Now we could just make this a friction fit and have these two parts just hold together like this, but I wanna make this a little more secure and a little more reliable with a bit of a snap fit mechanism. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and sketch on the inside face of one of these rectangular pins right here. And we'll turn on the section analysis so we can see what we're doing. But basically I'm just gonna create this little rectangular tab right here that's gonna snap into another part. We'll make that 0.15 millimeters tall and about eight millimeters wide. Now we can extrude that and we'll do 0.75 millimeters, which is half of the 0.15 millimeter height we did so that when we fill it this 0.75 millimeters, we get a perfect round. We'll do it on these edges as well, just so that it's a nice smooth looking shape. All right, so there we have a little tab. Now I just wanna mirror that to the other side. So we'll go ahead and select this central right plane, use the mirror command, set it to features, and select those last couple features we just did to make those pins. At this point, I decided to also fill it these corners around here and just round it all out because that'll make it a little bit easier to print and it also just looks nice. So we'll try to create a full fillet right there. And then I'll also fill it the corresponding holes and we'll match that fillet by having the equal radius plus the clearance distance, which was 0.2. So that makes this a 2.2 millimeter fillet. Perfect. Okay, so now we have those little divots, but we need something for it to snap into. So let's work on this back part. I'm gonna sketch on this face and create some offset lines based on the holes that we have here because I wanna create some thin sections of plastic that will be able to flex a little bit. That way it can give way for those tabs that we have on the other part and then snap back into place. So I'm just gonna cut this whole center rectangle out to leave us with those thin 1.2 millimeter walls on the sides of those holes. Now I'll sketch on this face and create a little bit of a cutout for that tab to fit into. So we'll change the visual style here to wireframe with hidden edges so that we can see that tab so that I can just eyeball a little cutout. I'll draw this rectangle, no need for dimensions really. And uh, let's select that and do an extrude cut and make sure we're only cutting out of the back panel. So as you can see now, there's this little notch that fits around the tab. And we'll give it a fillet to make it look a little nicer. I wanted to mirror that feature onto the other side once again, but for some reason it wasn't working here. Sometimes it's just a little finicky. So I'll just go back a bit and have that extrude go all the way through to the other side as well. And I'll redo the fillets too to include that cutout. Some small chamfers on the bottom here just to make the fit a little easier. At this point, the only thing that concerns me is that the whole cutout area for the USB plug is exposed. And I was worried that it might not hold the USB cable in place well enough. So I went back to this sketch where I cut out that rectangular hole and I added this rectangle and I'm gonna go edit that feature and not cut out that back part. So now we've still got those thin tabs that will snap onto our pins, but we also have a little piece that's gonna hold the USB cable into place. And this extrude is kind of unnecessarily cutting a section out of that little tab, but you know what? It looks fine, so I'll just go ahead and include that as a little design element. This is just a personal design for myself. It's not gonna be mass produced, so I'm not gonna put as much thought into every little element as I would if this was something that I expected thousands of people to end up using. But for now, this seems to be a good design. Seems like it'll do the job. So let's just go ahead and print this out and give it a shot. I printed my parts out on the CR10S Pro, starting with the back, which I printed in this really beautiful Polyalchemy Elixir PLA filament. These Elixir filaments by Polyalchemy really have the most incredible shine to them. So there's the back part. 
it came out looking beautiful. Here for the front part, I used one of Polyalchemy's new FX filaments, which has this nice granite texture to it. Aside from this little purple fleck from the first print, the parts came out looking pretty flawless. So here we go, we have our two parts. The prints look absolutely beautiful. They came out great without any support material as planned. Now we just need to see if this all fits together. So let's test the fit of our treasure. I've got it with the USB cable already connected and I'm just gonna squeeze it into place. Oh yeah, that's a really snug fit. The corner here is just round enough that the USB cable can make that tight bend and that looks great. Although, yeah, let's go ahead and remove this screen protector. I thought it might look okay, but nope. Off that goes. Oh yes, much better. All right, the final challenge. Let's see how this snaps together. Ooh, perfect. Satisfying, very nice. That actually worked really well. There is a little bit of a gap here on the back, which I had considered and could have fixed by just adding a little dovetail tab there, but it really works fine as is, so I didn't consider it worth the extra design time and printing. Besides, this thing works exactly as I was hoping. The USB cable comes out right to the side, easy to plug in, stands up on its own. I've got complete access to the screen. The buttons are easy to touch. What more could I want? Sweet, total success. We made the stand, it stands up. It works exactly as I was hoping it would. And it actually looks really cool in a kind of retro Star Trek type of way. I'm pretty happy with it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Doing these long in-depth Fusion 360 videos is quite a bit more work, so hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like and a comment, let me know. If you wanna see something different, leave me a comment with some suggestions as well. I'm always open to trying different things here on Make Anything. We're here to make anything. Well, that's it for this video. So until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything, and as always, stay inspired.